I mean, I'm going to start by asking, I mean, I love the movie. <laughs> it no, was so you. much fun. I mean, I grew up really loving uh, Bad Boys when I was a, a kid. So it was good to go back into that world. Um, and my first question was really about your relationship with the, with the property, with the, with the original movies. Did you grow up sort of loving them? Was it, I mean, it must have been quite yeah. exciting to be at the helm of a sequel. Yeah, yeah, we were, uh, I, I mean, I think it for a deal is the same, but uh, yeah, we were uber fans of the movie. Uh, uh, when I was young, I remember when I was at the schoolyard, uh, I was playing like one, I was playing with my best friend as if we were the, the cops, uh, like the bad boys. So I remember when I saw it for the first time and I was also a gigantic fan of, of, of the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and of Martin Lawrence. So to see them both in one movie playing cops but then you know breaking the rules that was just the baddest movie I've ever, ever saw so I was a, a gigantic fan and also I was a big fan of all the action movies from the 90s the movies that, that Jerry Bruckheimer produced um, uh, the movies with Tony, uh, that Tony Scott did Beverly Hills Cop all those movies had such a big uh, impact on, on me and um, when I went to school uh, to film school with Adil it was the first time I met him there in film school we were saying always as a joke that we were like the bad boys of cinema. So at that point, we were just two low life <laughs> students in, in Belgium make, making jokes and telling everybody like, if one day Will Smith is gonna call us, uh, then, then we do bad boys. And um, I remember when, when uh, our first, uh, our movie Black came in Toronto um, and won the, the film prize, uh, the, Discovery Award, uh, all the agents and managers of Hollywood came. So that was the first time that, you know, we got in contact with Hollywood and, and uh, it opened the doors for us. And then one of the first meetings we had um, was with Jerry Bruckheimer. And, and we asked him, can we make, make Bad Boys, uh, Bad Boys for Life? Because we knew there was a third one coming, but there was never ever... So it was never concrete, so, uh, and then, then Jerry Bruckheimer at the time told us, uh, yes, yeah, sorry, it's already a director making it, Joe Carnahan at the time, and eventually, years after, uh, it took a long journey, and it came back to us, and then you can imagine if you can make Bad Boys, that was just the most beautiful gift, and there's also our first Hollywood movie, so... Yeah. I mean, it's. Well, I mean, you guys do a fantastic job, but I mean, you can't. We can't hide from the fact that this was a gamble from 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 the producers. I mean, giving you this kind of big budget and giving you the the tools to make uh, this movie on this scale. I mean, you must have been so thrilled they took this punt on you. And was it actually quite a shock when when they said to you? right, you're hired. Because I mean, even though it's one of those things which you guys deserve because Black is so good, at the same time, it still feels like something that doesn't happen. You know, these, 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 these usually with movies like this, they always go to the old time Hollywood filmmakers who have done it a million times. But to take a pun on two young creative filmmakers, I mean, it's, it was quite a surprise. Did you guys remember feeling quite surprised? Uh, well, we were surprised too. <laughs> was, uh, oh shit! <laughs> so yeah, the whole time you're dreaming it, of it, and you think, yeah, but, you know, the thing is like, we always go from the mentality like uh, you can you can always ask it, and you can always try to 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 uh, achieve your dream, and then that day becomes real, and then it hits you. It's like the 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 pressure, the gigantic pressure that's behind it, and 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 you can't fail. So when we heard that, it was like, is this, is this now for real? And I think until the day that we really have our first shooting day and we saw Will and Martin in front of the camera and we were directing it, that's like the first time I realized, oh shit, this is real. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, 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 um, yeah, it's, it's such a, a, a yeah, we are so lucky that, that, that Jerry Bruckheimer really believed in us and that Will and Martin and everybody believed in us. So having their belief gave us uh, the confidence and also their experience helped us to, to, be, uh, to do our job as uh, the, the best we could. And I mean, obviously it must have been amazing to have such a bigger budget to play with, but what, what was the trickiest thing for you guys to shoot like logistically? Because I mean, you've got some big car chases on busy American streets. I mean, how, how are they to shoot? 
<laughs> it was the, the biggest challenge of the movie for us was uh, shooting in Atlanta in wintertime and making it look like uh, so like Miami in the summertime. Magical so, cinema. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that was the biggest fucking challenge. So I was like, oh shit, how? how, how? Because it, when it's wintertime in Atlanta, it's freezing cold. And then you have to ask actors and all the extras to play as if it's the warmest summer in, in Miami. So. Uh, and you don't have palm trees, you don't have the, the blue sky, you don't have the, the, the water. So um, that, was, that was a big challenge, um, uh, really difficult. So we found ways to, to make it work. And on the other hand, yeah, we, have, we can make big action sequences. So every time we said something for, as, as a joke, yeah, maybe we should let, let explode the helicopter or do this or do that. Okay, let's do it. And we were like, oh, what? <laughs> It's really possible. <laughs> Everything is possible in Hollywood. So, uh, but at the end of the day, whatever whatever budget you have, you always have the same two problems, and there is and that there is never enough budget at the end, <laughs> and you don't have time. Yeah. So, so not everything is possible in Hollywood. <laughs> so everything is possible, but in a certain uh, certain <laughs> frame. So tell me about Michael Bay's involvement. Obviously, you guys had him in as a kind of cameo. Uh, what was he like to, to direct? And also, uh, just yeah, what, what was his kind of involvement in, in the whole project? Because obviously, this is a, a property that's very close to his heart. Yeah, it's the thing is, we, we only we met Michael Bay the first time on the on the shooting day. That was the first time we saw him for real and talked with him. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, of course, we, for us as directors, it was super impossible that we, we the, the style in the first two movies was, was uh, an homage to Michael Bay and to the, to the DNA of the movie. But at a certain extent, we had to push our own, uh, you know, our own thing in it. So finding that balance was, was, uh, was something we, we really worked on from the first day till the last day. And then uh, when we met Michael Bay, yeah, we heard a lot of stories of him. Uh, we know that he yells a lot, so we were really scared, <laughs> especially at Hill. Uh, so when he came and it, we were, you know, everybody was telling how, you know, how, how Michael Bay is, but he was super kind and super nice. And, um, and actually the, the shot is, like, it's a shot where, where he comes in and, and it just does a 360. It's a Michael Bay shot. So... He, he directed it himself, so we didn't have to say anything. He was like, okay, I know exactly how I have to move around the camera. With a real actor, you have to explain exactly the camera is going to go around you, so you have to do the right position. So he directed himself, so it was really easy. It, and it was super nice, and the only thing he said is like, at the end of the shooting day, he said, don't fuck up my baby. <laughs> so it was a clear message. No, no pressure. <laughs> um, so... Just what was it? Talk, you talk about sort of balance. I mean, talk to me about the. It was it quite a difficult balance to stay true to the kind of tone and to the essence of Bad Boys and give the fans of the films exactly what they want. But at the same time, you want to put your own stamp on it. You want to say this is what we can do. This is what we can bring that's new and original. I was just wondering about that balance in kind of having the old and having the stuff that people love, but also bringing in the new that you guys can sort of show, put your own authority onto the project. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was for us. The thing is we, we, we really wanted to pay a big homage to, to the nineties action movies. Um, like I told you, Beverly Hills Cop, Bad Boys, uh, Lethal Weapon. Um, and so we really, Analyzed everything, analyzed and tried to maintain those 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 uh, in, uh, those elements, but finding the, the 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 thing that we tried to add was to add more emotion in the franchise. So really dig in to the to the relationship between Mike and Marcus and and going, you know, their 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 bond, their friendship. So. That emotional part that's that that which you don't really have in the first two movies is is something that we really added and we went deeper into the characters I think and that was I think the the thing that gives it uh that that's the something new to the franchise. You've mentioned Beverly Hills a couple of times. Is are you guys doing that? Are you guys taking on the the fourth installment for that? Yes, is yes, that... yes. We we signed, so we're. Uh, 
<laughs> the directors <laughs> of Memory Oscar. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> when, when, when does that all get started? Have you guys got a date in mind? Obviously, it's quite hard to know at the moment, but is, have you got a kind of rough uh, plan for that one? Well, uh, no, for the moment, I can't say like uh, ex ex what the plan exactly is. We, we're working on a, on a script now. Um, so that's the first phase and then we'll see how, how it goes uh, further and with the situation. So um, can't tell you anything about really how, how it's going to go. So we'll see. Cool. Well, I was going to ask, I mean, uh, so my next one was, because obviously on, on any movie set, you know, like directors always like the top dog, you know, it's your film, it's your set, it's your rules. Uh, but in this instance, because these characters are so close to Will and to Martin and they know these characters so well, is there a little bit of a sense at times where you just have to say, you know what, guys, this is your world. These are your characters. And you have to like listen to them and let them take control at times. Because I guess in this instance, this is something that they obviously they know so well, you know, no one can kind of compete with what they know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, yeah. Uh, they, they are, um, you, could, you could say we made the movie as a team, you know, it's like, um, I just I just remember the one of the first days that we were shooting. Um, we were seeing a scene. We were shooting a scene, and and Adil and me we were behind the camera. We were looking, and it was so good that we were laughing. We we're forgetting, <laughs> like we were already in the movie. And then they stopped, and then everybody looked at us, and we said, "Oh yeah, we have to say cuts, yeah cuts." <laughs> so then they came, and then Will said, "Was it good?" And then I said, "Yeah, but Will, you don't." You know it better than anybody. <laughs> so, but he really pushed us to 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 do our job and 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 really to um, to 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 bring it to the bring every scene to the you know bring it to the next level. And the only way to do it is is really uh, having our uh, really directing it. So we had to. There was always a possibility to make every scene better. And it's not because they know it already, they, that our point of view is not bringing something new to a scene. So having that combination, it was just uh, having a lot of trust in each, in, in, in each job, but, but still direct everything. So you understand what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. It's really a teamwork. I mean, the, the film is so, it's got amazing action sequences. It's got some great witty, funny one-liners, but it's actually got quite a profound undercurrent. I thought the whole theme of nostalgia was so rich in this movie. How important was that theme for you? Because, and just the whole notion of getting older, I, I thought it was actually handled really, really well. Yeah, it, the, the thing is the movie, that the theme of the movies is the old school versus the new school. You have the old, old school bad boys and then you have the ammo team the the, the youngsters uh, who uh, do their approach to police technique in totally different and that clash between old and new was was the team of the movie and we wanted to do we wanted to have that nostalgia feeling towards the older movies the, the 90s movies um, was extremely important in, in having that too that old school vibe um, it's been a long while that you know that we saw a buddy cup movie. Mostly the movies are superhero movies or or, or the Fast and Furious, which are more. If you look at the Fast and Furious, it goes towards. Uh, it's not really grounded. It is more. Uh, even the characters are like flying and doing impossible stuff. It's like super action. Um, and while those movies, those action movies from the '90s, were really grounded, and and you feel that it's it's real and um and that was a really important for us to have that that old school or or that that kind of uh th that element in 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 bad boys that that it's grounded you know and i mean obviously it, it isn't like you said i don't think it is that comparable to fast and furious but i'm not saying that you guys would make 10 movies but there is it is open to more bad boys is it something you guys would be keen to do more of i mean you can see that we can see the franchise definitely continuing after this film but is it something you guys would personally like to to be involved in yeah well the thing is when we were making the movie um we were always we always saw a possibility to make a fourth one because we love the characters and 
And you know, if you see Armando's character uh, in the movie, the, it, it's not it's not finished yet. There is still a possibility to make a fourth one. So we made the movie with the idea of of um, you know closing the franchise. This is the third one. This is the final one. But then at the end, when we were editing, because we had this idea the whole time, uh, we were really doubting. Why not make a fourth one? And it all depended of, of how the movie would be received and if people want to see it. But I don't think that we want to make, uh, I mean, personally, us as directors, we want to, don't want to make five, six, seven, eight. Uh, <laughs> all, you know, keep the franchise going. But for us, a fourth one has, has, his, uh, has his right to exist. Every, every, if it's a four, and if there is a fifth one coming, then the, it has to have a right to exist. It has to have something new, something that really uh, expands that bad boys world. So my, my final question is, I've gone over time, but my final question was just, um, you know, you've got bad boys and you've done, you're doing Beverly Hills Cop. What, yeah. is there any other big old school sort of like, you know, 80s or 90s action films that you guys would love to bring back one day? This could be like your niche. You could just keep bringing <laughs> back old classics. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is, 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 there's a lot man <laughs> there's, there's a lot i love it uh, I lo and, uh, you know was, a star wars movie would be cool <laughs> but yeah it's it's a, a, a difficult question um i think i think the you know seeing will and martin seeing seeing uh eddie murphy again in those roles is 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 really the ultimate yeah, yes, but I can't. I can't wait to see Eddie Murphy back for that one. <laughs> Me neither, bro. <laughs> yeah, man. All right. Well, listen. Thank you so much for your time today. It's been a real pleasure. And uh, you, maybe man. after the Beverly Hills or something, we can the interview will be in person. Who knows? <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. Let's pray right. to God that it happens. <laughs> right. I'm going to end this meeting. Thanks, Emily. Bye, Bilal. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching. Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey!